The teenage brain, understanding how it works and impact on their mental health. Having to face a mental health issue is tough enough. It can have a devastating impact not just on individuals, but on families, work, legal systems, and society as a whole. A teenager faced with a mental health issue is further burdened by how developed, or to put it more accurately, underdeveloped the teenage brain is. A developmental task is a physical or cognitive task that a person must accomplish during a certain period in their life. Unsuccessful achievement of this can affect how equipped that person is in facing challenges in the next stage of life. Teens are faced with their own set of tasks that will prepare them for adulthood. However, oftentimes it is difficult to separate these tasks and common adolescent behavior from mental health issues. Let's begin by making a distinction between our brain and our mind. The brain is a physical organ. Our mind is the result of our thoughts, perceptions, memories, and life experiences. The brain's purpose is to allow us to move around and coordinate all parts of our body. Keeping us alive is one of its main functions. The mind is a collection of our life experiences. As a result, no two minds are alike. Our brain is an amazing organism. It contains billions of neurons and has many different parts of it that serve different overlapping and even redundant functions. Over centuries, our brains have evolved. Individually, our brain reaches about 80% of its size around age two. However, this does not mean that we stop learning. Cognitive development and learning can go on indefinitely. To discuss all the different functions of each part of the brain, well, that would be quite a challenge and also very time consuming. What we're looking at are some of the key players involved in the brain that can influence teen emotional development and health. The amygdala is like a built-in alarm system. It is continually scanning the environment even when we're asleep. If it does become activated, it sets off a series of responses within our mind and body in addressing that threat. Our interpretation of the event or situation largely impacts on how we perceive threats. The hippocampus assists in the storage of memory and emotional responses. The storage of memory is what helps the amygdala determine threats. Now, not all experiences are converted to long-term memories. And somehow, if your hippocampus is removed, you would be stuck in the past of old memories. The hypothalamus has many different functions. One of its main responsibilities is for the connection between the endocrine and the nervous system. It plays an essential part in many different functions in the body, including emotions, sex drive, and sleep cycles. The sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems are part of our nervous systems, and they work involuntarily. The sympathetic system is responsible for the flight or flight response while the parasympathetic is responsible for the rest and digest response. The prefrontal cortex is involved in our major planning and executive functioning. It is a logical decision-making part of our brain. Keep in mind the prefrontal cortex is not necessarily a factual recorder of information. It will process information in a way that makes sense and is subject to some degree 
of our interpretation of the event and as well as our life experiences. Now that we have a general understanding of the human brain, let's take a look specifically at the teenage brain, which is a lot different than the adult one. We should view the teenage brain as really a work in progress. There are many physical changes that happen at this age that we need to take a look at into consideration and understanding of teen behavior. The human brain develops from the back to the front. This means our prefrontal cortex is the last to develop. The challenge for teens can be daunting from a brain developmental perspective. Emotionally, they are struggling to find their way in an adult world. The physical and psychological challenges they face can be pretty significant. There are four big brain events that happen with teens in regards to brain development. We already touched on the prefrontal cortex. Let's discuss the other three events. Myelin is a substance that surrounds the axon of some nerve cells, forming an insulating layer. This allows signals in the brains to pass more effectively. Myelation is the process where the coding takes place. Um, think of it as like an electrical wire. If it's properly insulated, it can conduct electricity more effectively. Signals within our brain are sent more efficiently as this process unfolds. Gray matter is a part of the brain which contains the cell bodies, dendrites, and axon terminals. It is where all the synapses are. It serves to process information in the brain. This thickens and peaks out in the teen years. Then after the teen years, it begins to thin as excess connections are eliminated or pruned. The thinning out is a helpful in a positive process and again allows messages to be sent much more efficiently. The last of the four milestones that present themselves during adolescence is called pruning. This involves the shedding of neural pathways and connections. Think of it as spring cleaning. The advantages of pruning is our brain finds new and more effective ways to communicate within our brain messages are sent much more effectively. Most of this happens before the age of 16, but the process continues well into the early 20s. Now, if we really think about it, it's a wonder kids ever get through adolescence. They are faced with many challenges from a brain development perspective. 